welcome everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to, and uh, happy that you join together with us to learn more about the robotic solution that we created together with the Kangni team. So today's topic is for uh, robotic development and the fleet management on the uh, Kangni team's Nimbus Cloud and the NVIDIA SDK. So I will talk about uh, the hardware solution and uh, the background for robotic development and how the solutions could help you to uh, accelerate your robotic project development. Uh, this page uh, is combined with a lot of uh, failure situation from robotic. So we understand robotic development is hard. Deploying the robot in the field is totally different from uh, de development in the lab because you can control the environment and uh, you you could uh, minimize the uh, variable factors uh, in the field. So a solid robot would require many components to work seamlessly to function properly. And the integration for each component has been a, a pain points for most of customers. So there is one uh, also very important thing, which is the seamless development cycle. And I will talk more later. So we know that robotic development uh, and an easy task, it will require right combinations between uh, hardware components, software architecture, and uh, the integration for the customer or for us to succeed. But also it's very important to have uh, this kind of a life cycle for each step could be combined very close from prototyping to production. In this cycle, uh, there are two important phases, which are prototyping and the de deployment, between which most project fails, not only for robotic, but for maybe AI, IoT, or other projects. So, uh, for example, after the requirement uh, phases, uh, the team working in the project evaluates different hardware components and the platforms, then they find a suitable one. Uh, now they want to make the robotic works. So they need to look into the software, uh, which are either or already available in the market. So they integrate it or the ones not uh, ready. So they need to develop from the scratch. So all components are put together and the prototype is completed after multiple iterations of this phase. This project life cycle continues and the team works to bring the prototype to production with the continuous and the iterative development and the testing, then we get to deployment uh, phase where uh, it seems straightforward because we finished the testing and uh, all things seems to be good. So it should not be a problem happen, but there might always be an unexpected challenges uh, due to maybe user experience or other factor. Then in such situation, it will be very critical for uh, development or testing to have the way to manage, manage it, even through a remote control, if possible, or maintain the robot through small updates or full redeployment if necessary. In later slides, we will explain more for how Nimbus can help within robotic development cycle to uh, give you a smooth experience. First, I would like to talk about the hardware component first. Uh, Aon is the hardware manufacturer, so we provide different kinds of uh, computing platform, uh, which could fit into variable needs for robotic development. On the left hand side, our platform based on Intel uh, with the Movidius AI accelerator. So you can see from uh, the button layer is the Movidius accelerators to give AI inferencing power. And in the middle layer is the Aton CPU, uh, the, the uh, Aon product based on Aton Intel. And the, the top layer is the one based on uh, Core i. Then uh, in the middle side, if you are into the uh, NVIDIA JSON family, you could find our Boxer series products based on NVIDIA JSON CPU from a uh, JSON GPU from TX2 Nano to uh, Xavier NX or AGX Xavier. And on the right side, if you want to have the more computing power, we have Boxer PC with the Intel Xeon CPU and also uh, the more, mi more uh, Intel Movidius Mirror X accelerator like a uh, by four or by eight, or even you could add the NVIDIA GPU to maximize the uh, performance. 
so I've talked about the hardware parts to complete the picture of the solution. We have a uh, container-wise uh, application using robotic frameworks such as ROS and ROS2 and the uh, AI inferencing application using Intel OpenBeano. These containers are running on top of either standard operating system or real-time OS. Then uh, these are integrated with a Nimbus Cloud, uh, Nimbus Cloud management platform to manage either the development, deployment, and the firmware driver update and the deploying new Dockerized components uh, to the robot in the field. And uh, also reading the data or analyzing the, dog, uh, the log uh, collected from robots. Cloud service is that we can connect to robots and uh, enable seamless integration like uh, programming or tether operations of the robots for a uh, situation requires uh, the remote control. And any kind of uh, remote maintenance that might be needed for robots running in the field. These robots can be scaled to uh, many units, even thousands of units using similar architecture. Uh, later, Eric will uh, give more details on this part. So here provides, uh, I would like to provide an overview structure to summarize uh, the robotic solution we created with the company team based on either NVIDIA or Intel uh, hardware platform. First, we provide options for different computing platforms. Uh, the most popular two for sure now in the market are Intel and NVIDIA. Then, uh, like I mentioned, only hardware, uh, selecting the right hardware with the right configuration is not enough. We would also need software architecture and uh, the integration to ensure every component works uh, properly. So we have engaged with the Intel, NVIDIA, and the partner like Committee within the robotic ecosystem to enable this SDKs. Regarding to Intel, we have OpenVINO for AI, one API for uh, heterogeneous computing, and the RealSense SDK for 3D vision and the SLAM. Besides, uh, the core of robot ROS and the ROS2 are also integrated. And uh, as for NVIDIA, we have ISAC SDK. Then together with the Kong team, we built uh, both uh, solutions based on NVIDIA and the Intel Robotic Development Kit, uh, which includes the necessary SDKs uh, and also the components for customers to uh, start and uh, speed up their uh, robotic development. Leverage this kit, customer can uh, easily start right out of the box and also uh, iterate their uh, so solution or project to application level that could be implemented in the field. Besides, today's topic is about Nimbus. So uh, we leverage the Nimbus integration with the Nimbus to enable the whole development life cycle in a smooth manner from hardware configuration, software development, robot management, fleet management to simulation on browser. So these are the two robotic kits we created together with the company team. And uh, they are now compatible with the uh, Nimbus. Uh, left one is based on Intel and the right one is based on NVIDIA. So if you are interested in uh, this one, you could uh, check the link here to get more information. Uh, to get a kit to start is uh, for the customer to easily can get their evaluation to be in place and they could start to play, play around the kit and understand what's the limitation in their algorithm or either in uh, their project. Then once they uh, finish the evaluation stage, they probably uh, would understand that, oh, I may need to have uh, uh, more computing power or uh, more inferencing power so due to the containerized uh, mechanism I mentioned in previous pages, uh, it, it could be easily scaled up to different play phone. For Intel, uh, now the kit we provide is based on Atom. And if they want to have more computing power, uh, they could easily up, uh, scale up to the uh, Core i or either the latest uh, Akalic Intel uh, CPU. And for NVIDIA, now the kit we created is based on Xavier NX. If they want to have a more power, 
they could just move to the AGX Xavier. And the, uh, for the AGX Xavier and the Xavier NX, the Cognitive team are now also uh, already uh, developed their solution based on uh, these two platforms. So uh, later I would like to pass the ball to Eric uh, because now I give you the background and the, the story behind it and the why we need uh, Nimbus and also the uh, hardware platforms that would be suitable and the, the essential software enablement we have done. So now let's get into the uh, core part, Nimbus, and see how good it is to help you in robotic development. So Eric, I will pass the ball to you. So uh, let me stop sharing. Yeah, you could just share. Okay. Great. So, uh, so thank you for this introduction. Uh, I'm Ari from Cognitim, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about Nimbus, which is our. Uh, robotic development and fleet management uh, cloud-based solution. And um, so this was, uh, um, oh, 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 the oh, presentation was a really good introduction to the issues that we're gonna discuss uh, during this webinar. And I will start with where Owen uh, left off, which is that uh, robotic development is indeed hard. And it's this combination of both hardware and software it makes it uh, very difficult. It's an interdisciplinary uh, field. And we have the combination. So on the hardware aspect, our software needs to talk with the platform, with the sensors, um, the different drivers. Uh, there are mechanical aspects, powering, networking, and other issues. And on the software aspect, we have uh, all the driver support, we have algorithms, um, we, we need to simulate our, uh, our platform inside the, uh, inside the simulation where we can test our software and see how it will then operate when it will be deployed. So there are all the issues of how we rebuild again our, our platform inside the simulation, and this might be a complex a task depending on how complex is our platform and sometimes also depending on how complex is the environment in which our platform operates. So these two, uh, and on top of that, there's also the, all the cloud connectivity, networking issues and things like that. So um, so the, this, this tension between these two things makes, makes it very hard to develop uh, robots and, and for that, uh, there are a lot of tools that are available. One of them, which is uh, really good, is ROS. So ROS is a, a now a very widespread uh, architecture. Um, it's a robotic operating system, and it's been now widely accepted for over a decade. It's been deployed and used in various scenarios. So they are uh, from the rover on Mars, projects in DARPA, Boston Dynamics, and other companies, vendors now use ROS to both deploy and test, develop and test their own uh, hardware, and then also to deploy it and make the software available to other people that want to integrate those sensors. So ROS is a really good tool, and it made robotic development a lot easier. Um, but, uh, but ROS doesn't cover all the needs of robotic development. So, uh, and, 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 and there are a lot of things that also with ROS uh, are still uh, difficult or uh, problematic or still not fully handled. So I'll start with talking about the things that, uh, that, uh, that now are, are, are still hard even when using ROS. So for example, ROS, uh, has a life cycle distribution, which is not tied to an operating system. So each Ubuntu version will have its own ROS version. This makes a lot of ROS version available. And then that means that sometimes there will be compatibility issues between ROS versions, or maybe there are drivers that are not available in one ROS version, but will be available in another. And 
so that's one thing. The other thing is the trust um, still doesn't help a lot with when you want to work both on ARM, for example, and AMD. So some of the architecture that we work on uh, in Cognitive and that our clients use are maybe low powered uh, compute models and they may be some ARM, but they are also uh, like this, basically these servers that are running as a platform, which might be using some AMD Intel based architecture and the migration and the support of those different architectures still not well handled in ROS. There are all the CPUs, GPUs and TPUs that now are used. So building a software that is flexible enough to be deployed to these and support these different hardware configuration is a bit, is a bit tricky even with ROS. That even without all that, there are all their typical issues of drivers for sensors and the operating system, if they are supported, need to be updated, firmware and things like that. <clears throat> On top of that, there's simulating the, the, the robot, which, for example, Ross arrives with a simulative environment called Gazebo, but it's not that easy to build a, a robot uh, to simulate your platform within Gazebo, it, it, it requires some uh, knowledge in modeling their, their architecture and then playing a lot with ROS configuration and the connection between ROS to the simulations. So all of these are still not uh, something that you could do with a click of a button, for example. And versioning is another issue. So developing a robot means that you have different configurations of parameters, versions for them. <clears throat> the same robot might be deployed with different configuration and there's all this bookkeeping that needs to be done. And ROS still, even with ROS, this is still a bit tricky to do. So these are the parts that are covered in ROS, but there are also uh, other parts that are not covered at all currently in ROS that, that, needs, that need other tools on top of ROS or other ROS projects. Uh, something that are not part of the architecture. So things could be, uh, some examples could be things like monitoring, <coughs> remote operation, analytics, cloud connectivity, fleet management and updates. But these are only like general, um, like headlines of things that are, uh, of topics that are still not handled. But if you actually want to know exactly what your robot is doing on a mission level, if you want to ro operate your robot remotely, if you connect, want to connect your robot to the cloud, uh, those things are still not, not covered at all in ROS. There are things like analytics to, to learn and to get insights from what your robot is doing. So this is a whole field that is not still uh, handled within the ROS architecture, fleet management, over the air updates and things like that. These are things that are still missing. So uh, with that in mind, Nimbus objectives were to ease this software development for robot, to provide long life uh, updates and upgrades for robot and to uh, enable to uh, build AI solutions and component and manage those solutions through the cloud. So these are some, these are the three main objectives of Nimbus. And I will show you some, a little bit of the highlights of developing in Nimbus. And then I will uh, dive a little bit into those, uh, those highlights and describe them a little bit more in detail. But let's, <coughs> let me share with you, with you this video. So you can see in Nimbus, we have a drag and drop environment in which we, we can create components and then these components can be connected just like boxes. We can connect inputs to outputs and create missions and configuration for the robots. We have a library of videos and documentation that support the development. And we enable to uh, create the robot description to, from the cloud. So you can see in here, we can dynamically create a robot and configure its sensor. And then we can take that configuration and create a simulation for it automatically from that configuration. 
and we have various simulative environments. Uh, once the robot is connected and built, and once the plans are built in Nimbus, we can deploy them uh, to the robot from the cloud. So this whole configuration, including the software and the algorithms, can then be deployed. And, and this robot can be monitored and we can scale to fleets uh, from the cloud and the data can be streamed online. We can manage and control the robot. So you will see here, we can share permissions. For example, we can add people to, be, to develop with us the robot and we can monitor it and teleoperate it from the cloud. So these are some of the highlights of how it is to develop within Nimbus. And I'll uh, dive a little bit into that. But first of all, let me describe a little bit the Nimbus architecture. So in Nimbus, we have, for example, we can have <clears throat> a local machine, a platform, and that on that platform, this can be a robot, but it can also be the, a, a desktop or a laptop in which we develop the software. We download an agent, which uses Dockerized containers. And this agent can support both ROS1 and ROS2 components. We have a CLI in which we can communicate with the agent running on the robot. And this agent can, um, can download these components, run various missions, algorithms. It can also provide us with a simulation. So when we want to simulate, our, the simulation can run on the browser. It doesn't need no cloud connectivity. And then, we can uh, execute the simulation within the browser and the compute do on the platform itself. So we can combine hardware in the loop and other advanced uh, types of debugging. And also the server that we have, uh, all the visualization tools that I showed you that we can see from the cloud, we can also see them locally from the robot. The other part is the Nimbus cloud. In the Nimbus cloud, we have a, a hub, a library of components. We have a lot of supported open source components. We already packed a lot of ROS uh, algorithms, ROS available packages like MoveBase, different SLAM solution, localization algorithm. So all those are already built as box and can be downloaded to the robot directly from the cloud. We have a lot of visualization tools that are available on, on the cloud and also analytics and there is storage. So for example, if you want to save data and then review it and analyze it, we can do that from the cloud. So how do we generate a simulation from a, a configuration in Nimbus? So in Nimbus, there, there is basically the definition, there is some model of the robot different ones can be uh, uploaded. I will show that later. And you see here, we have a library, which is increasingly growing, and we can select some component. For example, here we select a LiDAR, and we can place that LiDAR on the robot. <clears throat> that generates all the TF configuration from ROS. So in ROS, there is this transformation system, and this is generated here graphically. So once we place the different sensors on the robot, we can then simulate it and get all the data as if the data was coming from that location in which we place the sensor. That's one side, but the other side is also that we can provide other algorithms running on the robot with that TF information. And that all the configuration of where are the sensor and which sensors we put on the robot, this is saved all as part of this configuration. And then it can be versioned and we can monitor that in runtime on the robot. So in here you see uh, the simulation of the LiDAR where we, it is being simulated in the location where we place the LiDAR within the browser in the Nimbus simulation. Another example uh, is our visualization tool. So we basically have from the cloud something that is very similar to what you would uh, use RVs for when using ROS. So you can uh, see the map, for example, here, and you can send goals to the robot from the cloud. You see on the left, there is a stream image 
in which we can see the detection of a, a running from a DNN running on the robot. And, and basically we can interact with the robot in here in this example, for example, the video is being uploaded to Germany and then being downloaded back to Israel and it's all in real time. And, uh, and we can do that all while it, while uh, talking and interacting with the robot. So, so this is one example, but let's say we have a mission in which we already built, for example, and we want to add for it an exploration. Let's see, we have a mapping a mission and we want to add for it a, a, an exploration algorithm. So how would that be done? So again, we can take any robot, we can configure the different sensor location, and we can go to the mission part, uh, which is the, of the configuration, in which you have the different boxes, which each of them is an algorithm. And we can add, for example, an exploration algorithm. Now, exploration means that the robot uh, in the mapping process, the robot usually will generate a map, and that's on the on the top box. These are the outputs that are being generated. So we have some SLAM algorithm. In this example, it's G mapping, and the output of G mapping is a map. For exploration, we would like to receive a map, and we will give outputs goals to the robot to drive to. So in here, for example, we can take this component, connect the map input to the exploration algorithm. And this is visually uh, uh, seen visually, it's very helpful. And then we can output the goals. Once we've done that, we created a configuration, we can save a name and deploy it to any of the robots that we have. This, this example will be deployed and then the robot will execute it. Okay. And uh, before diving into the uh, NVIDIA, I will just give another example. So the examples that now I, I've added, you've seen robots that we support in Nimbus, but in Nimbus you can add whichever robot you want. So if you have a mesh of a driver, of a sensor, of a platform that you want to support, you can, when you can add it as a device, you can select its category, and you can basically upload its mesh. And once you upload it, you just need to configure different parameters like uh, things like its mass and its kinematic model. Is it a differential robot or if, if it's Ackermann steered? And then once you configure that, we will use that as part of this, this device configuration and we'll be able to simulate it inside our simulation. So this is a little bit about Nimbus, and I will talk now a bit about the Nimbus and Isaac uh, integration. So Isaac is an SDK, which is being made publicly available by NVIDIA. In this SDK, there are various gems, they are called. Those are components that uh, <coughs> NVIDIA uh, uh, provides freely. They're not open source, they are binaries but those are basically optimized neural network or different components that are uh, made available for Jetson platform. They are optimized to the NVIDIA architecture. And one of the things that we have now in Nimbus, we have support for those gems. So these gems uh, can be connected to ROS and, and, and we already made these components available as part of as a Nimbus component. So they are already dockerized and they can be already deployed and they can be deployed both to uh, both to ARM and to uh, Intel based architecture as long as they have a CUDA environment uh, which supports it. So, uh, so this helps a lot with integrating a NVIDIA algorithm and I will give a few examples. So this is an example of uh, a gesture recognition algorithm. So uh, you can see in here, in, in the center, we have an NVIDIA skeleton detector, which uh, receives an image from uh, the webcam driver in this example, and it outputs skeletons. 
And these skeletons, we do two things with them. First of all, we have a gesture recognition. So we recognize which gesture are being uh, made from the skeleton. So if I raise my right hand, the robot will know to stop. It, it will know to continue. Even if I will open my hands, the robot will know to stop. And those are commands that are being detected. And on the other end, we can show also the box of the detection and the skeletons that are, uh, we can overlay them on the image. So that's another component. And all these, uh, once we made those components, each of those outputs can be then visually showed in Nimbus. So <clears throat> I will show you how it looks in Nimbus. Um, So you will see here a split screen. On the left, you see the output from the detection components that just shows the bounding box and the skeleton location. And what is decided is if the robot is tracking us or if it's stopping. And you see here it detects the gesture and it stops. And then we can move around the robot. It will not follow us. And once I go out of the image, then uh, here, which help, which help me with this test, will raise this right hand and the robot continues to track. So this is an example of just taking the Isaac follower, which is already made available as a box and then using it, and it can be used in any other uh, mission or plan. And um, another example is the free space gem which detects where is a free space where the robot can drive and it's been done from a monocular image. So it's a camera, just the image from one camera and using a DNN, it detects where are the open places to drive to and then the robot can <coughs> use that information to drive only in the free area and that's without a depth camera. So that's, this is another example, which is really useful for a low powered uh, platform. And another example is taking the stereo information. So in here you can see a D435 uh, driver, which has uh, stereo images. So it has a left and a right image and also has gyro and accelerometer. We can, we, there is a component, uh, there is a gem in NVIDIA, which takes this input and then it provides odometry information. So this odometry information can be used for the robot to know where it is. And uh, without any GPS in indoor areas, and even without wheel encoders or without a LIDAR just from the camera itself. And it doesn't require to map the environment before uh, in order to know the location. So you will see here in the split screen, what you see is uh, uh, the location that is being outputted from the uh, SVO component. And then on the right, you see the Isaac site that is synchronized to that information. And you see the tracking that are being uh, uh, recognized in, uh, by the NVIDIA model. <coughs> now the Isaac site is the NVIDIA architecture in which you can see information, but it's not connected to ROS. It receives information di directly from the protos uh, that are being uh, used by NVIDIA. So there's a protocol that NVIDIA uses in order to communicate that information. We wrapped that protocol and converted it to ROS. So once we did that, any Nimbus component, regardless if it's ROS1 or ROS2, can use this information, that localization information. And that means that now all the components that our ROS base can receive this information freely when running this gem on the robot. And there's already a component that does that on the robot. And you see that the location is being tracked and that's also using a GPU calculation. Okay. Um, now to talk a little bit about uh, our support for the A-Online product, so in Nimbus, they are already made available uh, the two kits that Aon, uh, that Owen discussed, which are Intel, can be Intel-based or NVIDIA-based. <coughs> the, Ro the RoboMaker Pro kit uh, 
is the one that uses the app square and it uses the real sense and also the nvidia uh, pro kit which uses either any of the boxers it can be used with it and it can use either real sense or the z camera depending on the configuration but in general any pro kit now can support we can run nimbus on the any Jetson architecture on any NVIDIA supported platform or any Intel supported FARP platform like the AppSquare. Uh, so any of them, and you can test and play with different sensor configuration with those two platforms, um, with those two architectures, sorry. Uh, regarding the pricing table, so uh, our pricing is very flexible. We uh, uh, um, Cognimbus, the Nimbus architecture can be, uh, you can log in and sign up for free and you can play uh, with two, uh, there are two free licenses available to each uh, logged in user. And we have uh, 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 then different schemes for uh, supporting different bandwidth storage uh, requirements that are from five to $125 and, and also this pricing for organization, we can we will usually talk directly with the organization and we come up with a, a paying plan that's, that supports the different development team depending on their needs. So, and, and Nimbus platform is already available, it's online and it's free to try. So you can try it and download it to your, uh, to your architecture and play with different configuration and test it uh, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks to uh, Eric for the detailed introduction uh, for Nimbus and uh, the NVIDIA ISAC SDK. So now we are uh, we reserve uh, about five to ten minutes for the Q and A section. So if you have questions, you could type in the uh, question box below. Then uh, we will pick it up, pick it up, and uh, answer it. Yeah. Okay, there's one question. Uh, is Nimbus portable to drones? I think, uh, Eric, you could uh, answer this one. I think, yes, it's the best on the platform. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. So thank you. Um, yeah, we support also uh, drones. So there is a, the simu in the simulation itself, we have also simulation for, we have different devices, different drones. And there is also an example of a drone. I wasn't able to uh, edit, but yeah, those are available online. And um, we support also simulating and testing with drones. Yeah, so our, our software fully supports it. All right, thank you. Uh, next question is that uh, does the software run also on Genie or Pico uh, boards? I think uh, uh, Ms. Love uh, is the previous colleague from us. and. Uh, for the uh, Genie and the Pico, for sure, uh, if there is such a requirement, we could uh, work with the company team for the related uh, integration and the validation and the to enable it. So uh, if you have some uh, projects that uh, require Genie or Pico with the Nimbus or the software enablement, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I will bridge Eric to uh, provide the essential support and the validation, yeah. Uh, next question uh, from Elias is, can omnidirectional robots be added to Nimbus? Uh, yeah, sure. So in the, when configuring a robot, one of the options of the kinematic model is uh, omnidirectional. 
and we already support. So we have an example of the Kaya robot, which is an omnidirectional robot by NVIDIA, and it's already simulated. There's already the model for it, and and you can add other omnidirectional robots as part of the configuration, just as any other device. It supported the kinematic models. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Eric, there, there is some uh, question from the chat box, so I will uh, repeat here. How Nimbus is different from NVIDIA Armyverse and the ISAC platform? How it will be useful for organizations which are deploying robots in numbers of hundreds? Yeah, so, so that I, I can clarify the exam, the difference here. So, uh, so Nimbus itself is uh, is cloud based, and it's made for managing fleets of robots. So we have uh, I, I went to it really quickly, but you can also see it if you log in and sign up. So there is a uh, when you create a robot, you can assign it to a fleet, and then those fleet can be organized with all permission, like for the administrators or for developers, operators, and things like that. And they will have different access uh, permission to the robot, and uh, and all this system uh, then can you can deploy. For example, you can do a batch deploy to a lot of robots, and you can monitor them. And there's analytics for those robots. So this is something, for example, that is not exactly covered with the Isaac SDK. And it's in Nimbus we. We do integrate with the Isaac SDK, so we are an NVIDIA partner. And in this integration, actually, what we help is that you don't have to install everything yourself and you don't have to start and build these components. They are already made, they are already dockerized and tested on these different architectures. So they're already tested on the different JetSon platforms and you don't have to install additional things and all the CUDA and things like that, compatibilities are already handled. And if you want to test it on your laptop, which is not a Jetson architecture, then you don't have to download something special as long as you have an NVIDIA GPU, and it will also be supported there. So you could develop your, uh, your algorithms wherever you want, and then they can be dockerized. Some of them are already made available, and you can test them and just as and make them part of your configuration without dealing with how to wrap them with ROS or how to get the information out of them. All right, thanks. And the next question is, does Nimbus software already deploy in commercial logistic sites running fleets of robots? So, uh, so the Nimbus architecture is already deployed in uh, commercial uh, robots, but uh, we don't uh, necessarily uh, work still with a lot of logistic companies. But this is something that we will be happy to uh, to to, to uh, advance and to test and to work with if there's some specific interests or specific needs from logistic things like, so we've seen a request like that before, like, uh, and we, we will probably add them, but uh, things like, uh, for example, in logistic, a lot of times you have one robot that does the mapping and you want to make that map available to everyone and, and the asset management. So those parts are being integrated into Nimbus. And, but we're not targeting specifically a logistic sites. So that's something that, with a partner or with a different work, we would be happy to, to, to advance. Okay, thank you. So next one is about what is the process to integrate a robot that is not one of the predefined tiny robots that we show. And uh, in customer's case, uh, he has a agricultural robot controlled by rules. I think uh, for this one, the first step is that we need to understand the robot platforms you have and the details. Then uh, together with uh, our software architect and the uh, uh, company team, we could help to evaluate the efforts and the related validation need to be finished. So uh, maybe after the webinar, I could send out an email to engage with you to 
understand your requirement, then we could move forward to the next one. Yeah. And next one uh, is about does Nimble support DSS as it is compatible with the ROS2? DSS is useful for the customer for managing the robot fleets for them rather than normal TCP or IP. So in, in Nimbus, we use a commercial grade DSS solution, uh, which is based on RTI. So yeah, we support all, uh, which support all the standard of, uh, of uh, DSS and more. So yeah. Right, so now, uh, oh, there's another question uh, from Elias. Uh, okay, so this question is about what is the API between the Nimbus agent running on the robot and the cloud, uh, such as REST, DS, uh, DDS, et cetera. So, um, so the API between the agent on the robot and the cloud is based on a, on a protobuf. It is pros, protocol buffer and it's a binary protocol, which is very efficient, fast, real time. So it's not REST and it's not exactly DDS, but, uh, uh, but, it, but it's real time and it's very stable. And on top of it, we do a lot of things like uh, we, support RTSP cameras, we support uh, video streaming and all sorts of th all those things to enable to teleoperate the robot reliably and in a real-time manner. All right, thank you, Ali. So I think uh, uh, now we don't have any further question. We will wait for oh, 10 more. Oh. What about Google? TPU, machine learning, accelerator, VS, Intel, VS, NVIDIA. Is there interest for Nimble's project? Mm, I would say from current stage, uh, for the Nimble's project, we have a deployment in uh, NVIDIA Boxer and also some Intel use case. But for Google TPU, uh, currently uh, we from my side, I didn't hear about this kind of a use case or deployment. Uh, Eric, from your side, have you heard about Google TPU uh, for Nimbus? So we haven't yet integrated with the uh, with the Google TPU, but we did use uh, we do support Intel, uh, Myriad, Myriad X, all the Myriad family, and different compute sticks and. Uh, and running open Vino, which optimizes uh, machine learning for those uh, VPUs. So, and, and of course, we support the GPU from NVIDIA. Uh, yeah, so the TPUs, we haven't yet gotten into that. All right, thank you. Uh, so, we wait for five more seconds. If no more other questions, then we close uh, this webinar. All right. Uh, thank you, Eri and Yahuda, for you to provide support for uh, this webinar. And uh, thanks, Taylor, to organize it. And uh, thanks for every attendee who joined and uh, provide your uh, question. Uh, we, we, we are happy that uh, you are interested in the solution that uh, Aeon created together with the Kangmi team and I hope uh, uh, this presentation is interesting to you and help you. Uh, I saw one question is that can we have the presentation uh, shared by Kangmi team? Sure, yeah. Uh, we will send out by email to the attendees list for the presentation of this webinar. So you will get both the recording file and uh, the slides. So uh, this will be ready in your email box, uh, I think uh, today or tomorrow, right, Taylor? Yes, it will. As soon as okay. it's available, we will send out the presentations and the mm -hmm. webinar to your email. All right, so I think uh, that's it. I don't see other further questions. So thanks for joining and uh, have a nice evening. Uh, thank you, Ari. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Owen. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye.